Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 12 to 16. It's the Gospel for the Feast of St. Simon and St. Jude, Apostles, on October the 28th. St. Luke writes, Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve whom he also called Apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples were there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. That's from Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 19. It suggests thoughts about the church. What do I mean? Well, today we think of two of the twelve apostles, Simon and Jude. We know hardly anything about them except for the few passing references in the New Testament and some traditions about them in the early church. But that itself is a lesson, for their importance derives from the great cause to which they were called and the indispensable role as apostles they occupied. Their vocation as foundation stones of Christ's church leads us to think of the far greater reality, the far larger reality, which they served, which was, of course, Christ and his church. It is very true that the Christian religion is above all and firstly a matter between my creator and me. As John Henry Newman writes in his Apologia, God and my soul are the two fundamental realities on which pivot my eternal prospects. But while this is true, there are those whose religion is simply that. There is no place or little place for the church. The Christian religion for them is a matter simply of each person coming to terms generously with the word of God in Scripture grasping its meaning and living it out as a personal venture. This is Christianity. It is a matter between me and Christ, Christ present in his word, which is contained in Holy Writ. Now the celebration of the feast of the two of the twelve apostles reminds us that we are part of something far greater. Christ does not deal simply with individuals in time and history. He lives in his church, and comes to them in his church, calling them to membership in his church, of which Simon and Jude were two of the foundation stones. We are called to find, to love, and to serve Christ, but as present in his church. We are branches of a vine, and the vine includes the other branches. This is the church. So then, as we think of our two apostles today, let us think of the great family of which we are members. The church is Christ's direct creation. He is her bridegroom. She is his spouse. Let us think of how Christ died for his spouse, the church. Then, together with the Father, he sent to the infant church the Holy Spirit to be her animating principle. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon the infant church, gathered around Mary and the Twelve, including Simon and Jude, and with that coming, the church was born as the living body of Christ. Christ is her head. The Holy Spirit is her soul. This is the great reality of which Simon and Jude and the rest of the twelve were the foundation. Because of what the church really is, we believe the church and her testimony. For this reason, we state in the creed that we believe in the one holy, catholic and apostolic church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the church is apostolic, she is one, she is holy because of her being in Christ, 
and she is Catholic. Let us learn to love the Church as did Simon and Jude, giving ourselves over to her service in our family, in our workplace, and in our everyday life. Let us learn to look on the Church with the eyes of Christ, and not with the eyes of the world, seeing in her not just an institution of human beings united in a common belief, but the animating presence of Jesus Christ, her divine Head and Saviour. The fundamental reality behind and within and at the basis of the Church is the person of Christ. Without Christ, the Church, the Church which is founded on the Apostles and which is in communion with the successor of the Chief of the Apostles, Simon the Rock, would be virtually nothing. It is Jesus Christ who is present and active in the Church by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us use the celebration of the two Apostles, Simon and Jude, as an occasion for praying for a deeper appreciation of the true nature of the Church and the readiness to love and serve her as did Christ, her Bridegroom. He loved the Church and laid down his life for her. Christ will love us dearly if we, for love of him, do the same through the calls of our everyday life.